Hey guys, welcome back to my channel at Natasia R1. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about how I overcame emotional eating for good. Look, I mean, I've had emotional eating issues uh, since the age of 13, and it's been part of my weight loss journey, um, and I haven't hidden this um, as my own experience. So I'm hoping on today's episode, I can share some of the tips and symptoms of noticing if someone in your family or even yourself, whether you have emotional eating issues, um, and also sharing some of the tips which will help you to deal and navigate around emotional eating um, and maybe help you stop um, and help you lose those pounds you always wanted to but just didn't know what was causing it. So stick around as I share a little bit more. Emotional eating, stress eating, what is that? So in my definition and based on my own experience, emotional eating is basically when you're feeling sad or depressed uh, or even happy. You can even be happy and food makes you happy um, and you find yourself always strapping your face when you have these emotions. Look, I mean, everything is in moderation, right? It's just that when you step out of the bounds of moderation, um, and into excess that um, you may have a problem. And if there's a pattern of behavior where you find yourself eating when you're stressed or you can't handle a certain situation and you order your favorite hot wings, then I think that maybe perhaps you do have a problem. So what are the signs and symptoms of emotional or stress eating? So for me personally, uh, one of the uh, biggest signs of emotional eating is that you only find me at the fridge like for long periods of time and very quiet. So I'm quite a loud person. So you find me very quiet, dishing out something, eating something, but I'm very quiet. Because in my mind, I'm trying to process all my emotions, but I'm doing that through food and my interaction with food. You know, they say food is, a, is comfort food. But, um, you know, there's some danger in that as well because what are you comforting? Or maybe there's a void that you're trying to fill with um, comforting yourself with food. Symptom number two, you can also be happy um, and joyous and find yourself eating, um, you know, uh, seasonally and you find yourself eating food that's, you know, not really good for you. Um, and, and you binge eat. You binge eat because you're not feeling good or you're feeling good. It's just, it's, you, you don't have your, your, your calories and your portions under control. Another sign or symptom of someone who is an emotional eater is that they actually are closet eaters. You'll find them hiding chocolates or sneaker bars um, under their bed or in a secret stash in a cupboard and they'll eat that for no one else to know. So I've done that in the past where I would hide chocolate bars under uh, my pillows in the bed so no one will know, but in the morning you'll pick up the crumbs, duh. So there's obviously some evidence. So emotional eating is where you really want to try and you know, mask a lot of the emotions that you're dealing with and actually substitute it with food or, uh, yeah, I mean, with, with food or junk food. Another sign or symptom of emotional eating is the extreme opposite where you can't eat. So it is a paradox that, you know, it's emotional eating but you're not eating. You can go for days without eating because you're so stressed. Um, that's also a very bad sign um, of emotional eating. Ah, another sign of emotional eating is when you're a closet eater. So what that means is that in public you wouldn't eat um, copious amounts of food or large quantities of food but when you're in private once people leave that's when you bring out your stash of goodies your junk food or even normal food and you just binge eat so now we're going to tackle the tips which work for me in dealing with emotional or stress eating so number one the first step is acknowledging that you have a problem like with any addiction whether it's alcohol uh, or sex addiction, food is no exception. You have an issue with food and more specifically an issue with dealing with your own emotions. So the first step is number one, acknowledging that you have a problem. Number two, I would say deal with your emotions. And you may say, Nats, but I don't understand how. how. How do I deal with these issues? Who do I speak to? Well, I mean, 
the first step is speak to someone maybe who you trust as a confidant. Maybe there's something you need to share and you need some help or a mentor or even seek a, a, you know, some counseling or psychologist help. Maybe chat to somebody, a professional person. Maybe there are bottled up emotions that you actually need to release and it becomes a cathartic experience. And maybe that's the stumbling block in why you're always hungry or you're looking to feed your soul or soothe yourself with food and medicate yourself with food, really. Um, another tip is have an accountability journal. So have an accountability journal. Use your diary to record what are you eating for the day. I know it sounds tedious, but it really does help. Record what am I having for breakfast? What am I having for lunch? What am I having as snacks? And, and also be honest with yourself. If you have that Oreo bar or that Moki bar, be honest about it. Because um, end of the day, it's only you who's going to read this and you need to hold yourself accountable. Um, through documenting that in your diary, you'll be able to see the patterns and trends when and where are you actually eating. For example, you might be eating when you start work, when you open up your laptop, you find you start getting stressed and anxious. Um, and so you reach for a sneaker bar or an Oreo bar or a chop chip cookie. The point is you'll be able to pick up trends where exactly are those emotional uh, eating or stress eating trigger points. Uh, another tip is in my house, I pretty much got rid of junk food. So when I'm like emotional eating and moments when you relapse and you want to stress eat, I'll usually go for a biscuit or a chalk chip cookie or chocolate, I pretty much got rid of that in my house. So if you want to binge eat or emotional eat, you're going to have to grab an apple or a banana. To be honest with you, it doesn't satisfy the craving, but then at the same time, you need to deal with the emotion because the craving is not the issue, it's the emotion. So guys, I mean, that covers today's episode on emotional eating. If you like some of my content today like and share and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think let me know if this information was useful i'm always interested in understanding what people think um, and what my viewers have experienced with uh, my own experiences so until next time thanks for tuning in